because I thought of doing this um, before I'd heard anyone else talk about it. And I was like, this is the most original idea I've ever, ever had. Uh, but it turns out other people are looking into it as well, which was a bit of a bummer. But, you know, I mean, it's good because if it if it works, that's great. It means we can start taking l carnitine, but at the moment, included in pre-workouts, taken orally, waste of f***ing money. What's going on guys, Jacob, Sunday Lifters. In this video today, I'm going to be sort of giving you a overview and a sort of guide to finding a effective pre-workout. The pre-workout supplement market is just like, I mean, most of the supplement market, to be honest, is oversaturated. A lot of companies get away with sort of putting um, trash ingredients into their products or the right ingredients, but just severely underdosed to the point where it's just like you might as well not bother. Um, so hopefully this um, guide will help you find a good pre-workout and give you some idea for the dosages that you should be looking out for when you buy them. I'm also going to be going over some ingredients that are commonly included in uh, pre-workouts that, in my opinion, are just putting the price bracket up pointlessly and are a waste, you know, a waste of money um, and don't need to be in there in the first place. The price brackets on the manufacturing of these products, the um, import costs are just like skyrocketing. I used to get mine imported, but now it's just like not worth it at all. I'm paying like, I could be paying up to 50, 60 quid um, just to get a pre-workout. And it's like, they're good blends, but the shipping is just making it unbearable. To be honest, I really think it's getting to the point now where you might be better off actually buying individual components of these uh, pre-workouts and sort of making the blend at home yourself sort of mixing them together and weighing it out it sounds like a pain in the ass, but honestly you can save a shit ton of money doing it for those who live in the uk like me eddie hall just released a new pre-workout himself it's called the pre-workout i've had a tiny little glance at it um but not enough to really comment on whether i think it's worth the money or not but if you want to check it out yourself bearing in mind what i say in this video and judging whether it's a good pre-workout then by all means you'll probably save a lot on the shipping cost because it's manufactured here in the uk as far as i'm aware so without further ado let's get into ingredient number one that you should be looking out for caffeine and hydrus obviously you've probably heard of caffeine it's the most well-known central nervous system stimulant on the planet um the dosage for this sort of thing is difficult to say because you need to judge it off how um sort of you respond to stimulants, how tolerant you are of them or how susceptible you are to them. For me personally, I can have sort of, and I, I look for about 300 to 350 uh, milligrams of caffeine and hydrus in a two scoop pre-workout. The reality is you're probably not gonna find many that do that sort of dosage in, in a two scoop um, pre-workout. But if you're getting one that's got a lower sort of caffeine content in it, let's say, 150 milligrams which in my opinion is on the low end you can sort of titrate that up yourself by putting more caffeine into your sort of shake when you make it um so you know if you're starting on it's always my recommendation you start on a lower amount maybe 100 mg 150 mg and then if you you know not really feeling it either get a pre workout that's got more in the two scoop or you know caffeine's cheap as chips just titrate it up yourself measure it out and put it in, you know, buy the caffeine separately. So why caffeine, why do you want it included? It's gonna help you stave off fatigue, it's gonna increase your power output, it's, um, you know, it's got cognitive enhancement properties to it. There's a lot of, you know, studies, obviously caffeine being so well known and so commonly used, there's a, a reason it's legal. Um, it has a lot of benefit um, on work output even in people who are, are sort of fatigued or tired. It's not recommended we have more than 400 milligrams of uh, caffeine in a day, so just be mindful of that. This is why I don't really drink that much coffee, which is why I could have a two scoop pre-workout with 350 to 400 milligrams of caffeine and hydrous in it, um, because I'm not gonna really be getting any more caffeine throughout the day. I, I really rarely drink coffee, and if I do, I would sort of, you know, have one scoop. Ingredient two is creatine monohydrate. The first video I ever put up, I'll put a card somewhere up here um, with a link where I do a full detailed breakdown 
of why creatine is pretty much the best performance enhancing uh, supplement you can use that isn't like uh, a testosterone or a synthetic testosterone derivative slash um, androgenic anabolic steroid. Um, so, you know, absolutely should be included in it. The efficacious dose of creatine monohydrate is five grams. Um, despite, despite it being so cheap, there's still so many pre-workouts who skimp out on the amount of creatine they put in it. It should be 2.5 grams in um, you know one scoop and five grams in two scoops, or 2,500 milligrams in one and 5,000 in two. Um, despite that, so many underdose it still. So again, uh, you know, it, either find one that, that sort of has that five grams if you want it included. But if you really can't find a, a pre-workout that does have that dose in, again, buy the creatine monohydrate separately and titrate it up yourself. Um, and this is what I mean. If you're doing it with caffeine, you're doing it with the creatine. Um, at some point you go, is it cheaper just to buy all the separate ingredients myself and make this shit? The third ingredient is L-citrulline. You'd be wanting that about eight to 10,000 milligrams. A lot of companies, you'll see it says um, citrulline malate or L-citrulline citrulline malate on the tub, which basically means it isn't pure L-citrulline. It's got malic acid in it as well. Um, really to get sort of l uh, sorry, citrulline malate, you need to be chemically bounding those two things together, the malic acid and the, the L-citrulline. However, a lot of companies just put them in a giant vat, stir it all together, and then say, this is citrulline malate. Now, unless the sort of supplement facts state otherwise, it will be a, a one-to-one -one ratio of L-citrulline and malic acid. So what that means is what companies do on the supplement facts, they'll say eight grams citrulline, malate or l citrulline malate then you as a consumer just assume that they're not trying to you know deceive you in any way and and that's you know the eight grams of citrulline you need when in reality it's four grams of l citrulline and it's four grams of malic acid now the minimum affected dose of l citrulline is three grams that's not optimal though so you know the minimum is three grams but ideally you want to be getting at least eight now, if you can't find a good pre-workout that just does the L-citrulline on its own and the malic acid separately as separate ingredients listed, look for a one that says citrulline malate or L-citrulline malate at a two to one ratio and has about 12 grams because then at least you know that you're getting sort of the eight grams of, of L-citrulline and the um, the the four grams of, of malic acid. Malic acid is still good to have separately as an ingredient in pre-workouts because it, it interacts with the Krebs cycle, which is a bodily system we use to make uh, energy. Um, and it's also been linked with like sort of reducing lactic acid buildup, which is obviously great from an endurance standpoint as well. The best two I've seen for getting that sort of eight to 10,000 um, milligrams of L-citrulline in, is uh, Gorilla Mode, which I think is 9,500 or something, and then HTLT Sups, which is the full 10,000 milligrams. Um, however, again, they're both American brands, which means shipping them over is, is costly as fuck right now, man. So why has L-citrulline made this list? It's made the list because it's gonna boost nitric oxide in the body, which is gonna sort of loosen up all the, the sort of blood vessels, relax them, make blood flow much easier, get into the vital organs like the heart. Um, longer term, it's it's sort of shown to, um, you know, lower blood pressure. Uh, it's gonna improve your pump in the, in the gym. It's gonna improve your vascularity. It provides um, atherogenic uh, endothelial protection, which basically stops like, um, you know, sort of blood clots. Um, it sort of opens up the, again, opens up the passageways, stops like plaque buildup. Um, it's got like a whole myriad of benefits um, to it. And in my opinion, L-citrulline is probably one of the most important ingredients that gets included in, in sort of pre-workouts. So the way L-citrulline works, it, it, it sort of bypasses the liver and goes to the kidney where it is metabolized and turned into arginine, which is the actual thing that sort of boosts the 
uh, nitric oxide in the body. Um, you can supplement L-arginine um, directly. However, L-arginine, is it doesn't really boost nitric oxide in the body because what happens is that the L-arginine gets metabolized in the liver. It doesn't bypass it like the L-citrulline does. So when it for some reason, when it's metabolized in the, the liver, the body can't use it. It doesn't improve the systemic level of arginine in your body and you don't get that same response from the nitric oxide increase. The fourth ingredient is L-tyrosine. Um, you'd be wanting that about 1500 milligrams uh, in a two scoop pre-workout. L-tyrosine is an amino acid that is sort of um, a cognitive enhancer basically. It's going to improve mood, focus, uh, energy levels. It's uh, linked to an upregulation in dopamine, in uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Um, it, it, it's just, a, yeah, it's a great ingredient to have in there. And that's why it's made the list. Uh, and the good thing about L-tyrosine is it seems to be one that you know companies don't skimp out on as much. You usually get 750 milligrams in one scoop and uh, 1500 milligrams in two scoops. I don't know, but maybe L-tyrosine is just like really cheap, which is why they don't uh, skimp out on it. But then I just think like that can't be it because otherwise they wouldn't be skimping out on creatine monohydrate because that's cheap as chips as well. It just doesn't make sense. So that completes my list of active ingredients at a minimum I'd be looking for in a pre-workout. Um, again, because there's only them four, in my opinion, it might be cheaper. Just buy the ingredients yourself and make your own blend at home. Um, you know, there, there are other beneficial ingredients to have in pre-workouts. However, these are the, the very minimum I would want in there and at the, the, the correct dosages. I don't see the point in paying money when I'm not getting the dosages I need. It's it's just, if they're not at that dose, um, it's, it's just not doing anything for you. It's just wasting your cash. Um, at least if you measure it out at home and buy them separately, um, you know, you know you're getting the right dosage and it could save you a lot of money. Either that or like I say, just look for a pre-workout that at minimum has those things in it. Anything else is probably going to be an added bonus or a absolute fucking waste of money. And probably the latter is more likely. I'm going to go into some ingredients now that I see in a lot of pre-workouts that I think are pointlessly putting the price bracket up um, and just don't need to be in there. Uh, you know, I'll give you the information on why I think that and then you can make your own mind up. So ingredient one, beta alanine. This is the ingredient that sort of makes you feel dead tingly when you sort of about half an hour after you take it. It gives you insane like face itches. You'll be like, I, I, di I know I've done it all the time. Like, you don't, you're just like scratching your forehead for ages, man. Like, it just feels, it, you know, I, it, it I don't hate it, I can bear it, but I just like hate that sort of feeling of like, I'm scratching my head and looking around the gym like, oh, I look like such a weirdo right now, man. Um, and it's pointless as well because the concentrated amount you need of beta alanine for it to have a significant performance enhancing benefit is 179 grams cumulatively um, available in the body. Now. Most pre-workouts are like giving you like two grams of flipping scoop and you're having that, what, once a day? So it's like, you'd ha in order to hit that 179 gram cumulative, cumulative sorry, amount in your body, you'd have to be having two scoops of pre-workouts three times a day for weeks on end. The half-life of beta alanine is 25 minutes and the, for the for it to be sort of completely gone is like three hours. It's like, it's so hard to hit that 179 grams and for the performance enhancing benefit you get, it's like a, a couple of percent, is it worth it? I don't know because the thing is, if you're having like sort of a pre-workout several times throughout the day for weeks, you're gonna be overdosing on things like caffeine and like the other ingredients in there. And this is where, I, and I've not looked into this, but I've wondered like, would beta alanine be a good or a, a sort of, would it be, you know, cost effective to supplement it on its own? I don't know if any company has done a, a sort of, you know, singular ingredient beta alanine supplement. I don't know if it's possible. I might look into it, to be honest. But 
but yeah getting this in a pre-workout is just in my opinion so pointless putting the, the, the price bracket up and there's no chance if you're having your pre-workout even if you're having two scoops like I say once a day for a week you're not building up to that cumulative amount you're never going to get there so it's pointless ingredient number two l-carnitine l-carnitine just has a such a limited bioavailability when taken orally it's just not worth doing it's just putting again you're wasting money on it the only way we really know of that you're going to be getting the desired effects from l-carnitine is by sort of injecting it into yourself and you're not going to get that in the uk sorry um genuinely looking into seeing how effective or bioavailable it is when taken sublingually there's not much data on it um at the minute but i'm going to keep looking into it and also genuinely considering just having a go at doing it myself at starting on a really small dose and sort of seeing what the effects are and and sort of titrating it up over time um and seeing if there's any side effects if anyone else has done that drop a comment down below message me on instagram i'd love to like just you know i'm interested in it because i thought of doing this um before i'd heard anyone else talk about it and i was like this is the most original idea i've ever ever had uh but it turns out other people are looking into it as well which was a bit of a bummer but you know i mean it's good because if it if it works that's great it means we can start taking l carnitine but at the moment included in pre-workouts taken orally waste of fucking money and the last one is uh, vitamins and antioxidants found in pre-workouts commonly vitamins are like added into pre-workouts for no good reasons things like vitamin c b12 um, and other antioxidants as well the problem with these is when you work out what you're doing is you're tearing your muscles you're you know you're sort of damaging them causing sort of stress to the muscle and that's what allows it to go through the process of recovery. When you take things like um, vitamins and antioxidants or like anti-inflammatories like paracetamol or aspirin, you're sort of not allowing the muscles to get inflamed and sort of damaged in the first place to go through that road to recovery where they heal and sort of heal bigger than they were before, you know, allowing the body to sort of grow. Um, you're inhibiting that process by doing these things. Again, I thought that would sort of be obvious, but it's not. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not discouraging you from having these things. You know, take leucine after a, a workout. Take, uh, you know, I always take a multivitamin before I go to bed, but just having them in a pre-workout is literally counterproductive to what the, um, you know, what the, the purpose of that product is. It's just to help you get a, a sort of great workout get a pump uh it's not supposed to be um you know a multivitamin so there you go guys that completes the list of things you should be looking out for in a pre-workout and things that i think are just putting the cost up for no reason um and if you can find a pre-workout without them i think that's probably hopefully going to bring price down but maybe not um but like i say i'd, I'd seriously consider at this point in time making your own blend buying the ingredients separately i think it's it's definitely the way to go it's it's the cheapest method um until we get some sort of you know normality come back to the market where price on manufacturing stabilizes or slows down i doubt it will go down um but you know shipping will go down hopefully over time um right now it's crazy but you know this time next year we might be in a better position you just got to keep an eye on it thanks again for watching guys hope you found it useful uh you know drop a comment let me know if you agree disagree uh drop it a like if you want to and you can subscribe hit that bell icon if you're watching on youtube you can follow me over on instagram at sunday lifters um and you can sort of get in touch via emails sundaylifters at gmail.com for online coaching, meal and workout plans. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.